Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your coffee like I did. In the last part, we showed you how to square up the stub axle by whacking and squaring up the hub nut. Okay, well, we've got that far. Fine. Now, we're going to concentrate on the bearing here, which is a needle roller bearing. Generally, it just supports this side of the CV joint, and it will wear out. So, best thing to do is to get the part from the kit, and then work out also which seal you'll need to fit behind it. Oil-fed hubs will not have a seal because it lets the oil through. This one is the right one for this axle and you need to check. So what we're going to do first of all with the vise, we're going to knock the bearing and the seal out and I have a cranked tool so I can get in behind there and whack it out. If you knock it from two or three different sides opposite to each other, eventually it will come out like so. It's not in there that tight, and now we're ready to fit a seal and a bearing. Here's the old bearing, and it has a plastic carrier for the needle rollers, and you can't tell whether this is worn. Usually you'll see that it's dull on the needle rollers, and that will be a good indication that it's fairly well worn. This is the seal, and you can see that it's got a metal casing and the area where I've knocked it out from. It will also have a number. Now this seal here is corresponding to the one I've knocked out, so that's the one we choose. Fitting the stub axle into a vise, you can put two nuts on the end so the thread is not protruding and this will make sure it doesn't get damaged. Since I know, like myself, not everybody has specialist tools and I'm using a socket that's just slightly smaller than the bearing itself, but it will also fit just nicely so it will push it in. And we're going to use the seal first of all, remembering which way I knocked it out, that's where the seal will go back. Okay, unless somebody's put it in the wrong way in the first place, so it'll fit in that way. With the socket, I can fit that in. And I just want to show you that it is about the right size, so it will knock it in and not get stuck in there. You've got to remember that, getting it the right way around. And because I'm using the socket this way, I'm also using an old extension and a hammer, okay? Banging it in the center will knock it in square, so there you go. Not too hard, and that's fitted, that's okay, it's not damaged at all. This type of bearing is very delicate and it needs something packed out in the center so it doesn't drop the bits. The best way is to use an old CV joint, or even a current one, and position it. This way it can be knocked in fairly accurately without damaging it and it doesn't actually take that much pressure to push it in. What we'll find though is that this joint, once you've got it up to the collar, it hasn't gone all the way home. Ideally a press, a workshop press, would work fantastically. We don't have that luxury so we're going to use a G-cramp and use gentle force. What we're looking is to get the bearing so it's not damaged and it's below this chamfer. So positioning the socket evenly, and this is what I mean when you need a socket that's just slightly smaller than the bearing itself or the outer casing. Position it so it's square and straight on. The G-cramp will then push down the centre and gently push it into place. You don't have to go too far with this, just enough so it's past that chamfer. As we can see on here, this is how it's positioned, and that is now in the correct place. Just to show you, there it goes, and it's in position very nicely, and I haven't whacked it anywhere to damage it, so the bearing is now rollable. It's moving. The seal is not damaged, and that stub axle is overhauled. The bronze collar on the stub axle will actually wear with the CV joint, all right, like that. You have a little bit of end float, and we'll set that up later. Unless the notches are missing, then the collar will be fine. Okay, so the last thing, in a wheel bearing set that you'll get, you'll have a hub nut, one brand new nut. Usually what you find is screwed up and chiseled nuts. I haven't seen one that's in good condition. I don't know why people chisel them. However, these are not acceptable to fit on. If you screw these and try to tighten them up and you have burrs on the faces, they won't lock properly. 
So what we're going to do with this, you can see the raised parts here, and this is on all of these nuts, is put it in the vise, nice and flat, and then file it so we're taking off all the excess and damaged material on the faces like this. You get your file nice and even and you get a flat face. I'm sure you must have done this in metalwork at school. If not, then it's time to learn. So at the end of it, what you're looking for is smooth faces so it will mate properly. If not, keep going until they are. Just don't misshape the nuts. Okay, there you go. There's a few bits and pieces. We'll carry on the tutorials pretty shortly.